You're not buying GPUs. What's wrong with you? Elon Musk wants to know what's wrong with the staff and the not working in the office ants. We got release dates on the RTX 40 series. Let's get into the hot news, everybody. I'm your Brett host. We're gonna be going into the hottest tech news I can find on the internet while you enjoy your breakfast. And we're gonna start off today talking about how the GPU market is slowing down, which probably equates to the fact that, you know, the prices have been coming steadily down as well. John Petty Research revealing its findings about the GPU shipments that have been happening all across the world. And it looks like it's declined quarter to quarters. From Q4 of 2021 to Q1 of 2022, it looks Looks like there was a drop of 6.2% quarter to quarter and 19% year on year. You guys just aren't buying as many GPUs. Likely, it's the fact that, you know, miners aren't buying as many GPUs uh, and we have to keep GPUs away from kids under 18. Uh, I think that was a uh, correct legislation for the government to pass. But we also have details on what's going on with the market share of these GPUs. If we take a look at Q1 stats, Intel dropping from this time last year at 68% of the GPU market share to just 60% this year. Nvidia looking like it's squeezing all of that juice going from 15% to 21% and AMD barely increasing 2%. Now these are all GPUs taken into consideration. That includes integrated, but it's really impressive that Nvidia is putting up those numbers, especially considering the fact that they are only discrete GPUs at this point. They don't actually integrate into anything. But if we take a look at PC discrete GPU shipments, it's clear that Nvidia has the lion's share of that coming in at 78%. Intel with its Arc launch now has 4% and AMD has 17% of the market share. So it looks like Intel is taking a bit more from AMD than Nvidia since Nvidia's percentage has stayed the same since Q4, whereas AMD is continuing to drop. It's hard to say where exactly this is going to end up once Intel actually does have an official launch of their like desktop discrete GPUs and not just in laptops that you can buy in Korea. That'd be swell. Looking forward to it. There's also the DG1 that's out there. I'm actually surprised that it's as high as 4%, but it's in a declining market. Overall, they're not expecting GPU sales to continue to on their downward trend. They're actually expecting an increase of 6.3% of sales over the next five years, but especially with something like the Ethereum change over to proof of stake happening, maybe it won't actually go that way and their forecast might be a little bit off. But again, we gotta keep GPUs out of the hands of miners. Get your hands off my GPUs, you filthy children. And Qualcomm says Nvidia, get your hand off of ARM. Oh wait, too late. The government's already said you couldn't do it and they pulled out anyways. Qualcomm wants to ensure their future since they use ARM for a lot of the processors that they make by making sure that a consortium actually purchases ARM in order to maintain ARM's neutrality rather than having it go to a giant conglomerate who was totally 100% going to screw everybody over in NVIDIA. It makes a lot of sense. Qualcomm CEO saying it's a very important asset. It's an asset which is going to be essential to the development of our industry. You could say that twice. It's very clear that ARM is incredibly important to the likes of Apple, to Qualcomm, and likely will continue its importance as time rolls on. I, every day that passes, am more thankful that NVIDIA did not end up buying it because I just, no matter what Jensen said in his nice sexy leather jacket sitting in that kitchen of his, I don't trust him to not make ARM proprietary to NVIDIA. I just didn't trust it and it didn't look like anybody else did either. But looks like we can trust the God of War devs because now that FSR 2.0 is released, it's also been released for God of War on PC. This is what you love to see from game developers that they actually update it with new features. I really love to see PlayStation games coming in on the PC. I'm actually really excited to see that they're supporting this game well on PC and that there's continued developments. Horizon Zero Dawn has also got gotten better as time has gone on on its PC port by God of War. It's one of the best gaming stories I've seen in some time. Okay, I'm so excited for Ragnarok. And I'm now excited to talk to you about crypto stocks. Bitcoin down 4.65% on the day. Uh, it just, it needed to take a nap after this morning. It woke up early and then it just decided to fall off a cliff. It's at $30,186. Ethereum also down 6% to be at 1820, having the same roll off of the cliff. And Dogecoin down 4.88% to sit at 8.1 cents. What's also dropping off the cliff is some tech 
prices. We got UFD deals for you here. Reese bringing you the hottest tech deals out on the internet. And we've got the HyperX Cloud Core wired headsets going on sale for $35 right now. Big fan of the Cloud 2s from HyperX. I actually did pick up the Cloud Core a little while ago. I just needed like a good budget entry level gaming headset for playing Fortnite with my kids. And this suited the job perfectly. I actually really enjoy these. And especially for $35, it's kind of hard to go wrong. Check them out at the link in the video description. But there's one thing that looks like it's going to appear to cost more than we originally thought. And that's the Volkswagen ID Buzz. This is probably my most personally anticipated electric vehicle that's coming out. I've mentioned it several times. I need a vehicle for my son that actually has doors that either slide or lift up so that we can easily put him into the vehicle. And going electric just makes a lot of sense in today's day and age. So our choices are the Model X and nothing else because we're waiting on the ID Buzz to potentially come out. And the pricing now being revealed over in Europe is not as cheap as it was expected. Some people were expecting that this might cost under $50,000, but the starting price in the UK is 57,000 pounds, which is roughly equivalent to $72,000. So you can pre-book it right now over on the UK website for that 57,000 pounds. It does look like if that includes tax, it should cost roughly $60,000 here in the US, which considering how much like an accessibility minivan costs like that's not terrible and I might have to squeeze it out at 60 grand. The 200 mile range that it's supposed to get isn't a good pill to swallow at that price point. But I mean, who else is making electric minivans? My wife and I were talking about this earlier. One of the ones that we do want to consider because it has the suicide doors is the Kia EV9, because that actually is one of our major issues to get our son into the vehicle. We have to go around the door and then like kind of put him this way into his uh, safety seat. And so it's like, there's a lot to go wrong when it's a kid who actually can't help himself get into a seat. If the door got out of our way and swung out that way, it would actually, we wouldn't have to maneuver as much. We just open the door and pop them in. Key EV9, maybe, we'll see. Long Brett rant, sorry about that. But let's talk about a cheaper electric vehicle, the Chevy Bolt and Bolt EUV getting price drops of $6,000 roughly so that the Bolt EV now starts at $25,600, which I think officially makes it the cheapest MSRP electric vehicle in the United States right now. The Bolt EUV also getting a price drop to start at $27,200. Chevy obviously not selling a whole lot of these because of the battery issues that they've been having. The fact that there was a sales moratorium on them because of the fires that were happening because of the garbage batteries that they were using. Allegedly, that's been resolved. Whether or not you trust them, even at this price point, I don't know. Do you, do you do that? I, I couldn't tell you. I'm not considering one, I'll tell you that much. And Elon Musk is not considering Tesla employees who work remotely to be employees anymore with him sending out emails say, hey, if you don't show up, at least 40 hours, we will assume you have resigned and you're not allowed to be here anymore, both to Tesla and to SpaceX employees. Several memos getting leaked. The first memo was just to the executive team where it essentially said that, yeah, you have to be able to come into the office in order to work here. The second one was to everybody and it was to be super clear. Everyone at Tesla is required to spend a minimum of 40 hours in the office per week. Moreover, the office must be where you're your actual colleagues are located, not some remote pseudo office. So not anything like a WeWork or otherwise. If you don't show up, we will assume you have resigned. Then saying the more senior you are, the more visible must be your presence. That is why I lived in the factory so much so that those on the line could see me working alongside them. If I had not done that, Tesla would long ago have gone bankrupt. There are, of course, companies that don't require this, but when was the last time they shipped a great new product? It's been a while. Tesla has and will create and actually manufacture the most exciting and meaningful products on any company on Earth. This will not happen by phoning it in. Thanks, Elon. He also sent the same exact email to SpaceX employees, just uh, interchanging Tesla with SpaceX. Very clear, he's not a fan of remote working. And then clarifying, if there are any particularly exceptional contributors for whom this is impossible, I will 
review and approve those exceptions directly. I've already asked several of you guys when we done this discussion before to leave in the comments, what has been your work style since COVID has happened, whether you've gone fully remote, whether you've gone hybrid, but the studies are very clear that most companies are more productive than they've ever been by having remote workers. Not every business can thrive on it. Some need to have them physically in office. I know that here as a media company, it is better to have people in office than remote. I still miss you recent, Catlin. <laughs> But at the same time, it feels odd. Uh, again, I'm not a runner and CEO of a multi-billion dollar organization, but it seems odd to issue a blanket statement saying, screw y'all, you can't have remote jobs, even when somebody might be able to do their job more effectively, not in an office. And to be a forward thinking company who doesn't in, at least embrace it at, um, where it's appropriate seems a little weird. But when was the last time I ever shipped a good groundbreaking great product, huh? When? Speaking of blanket statements that don't make a whole lot of sense to me, France is banning English gaming terms like esports and streaming, okay? You're not allowed to say this anymore if you're part of the French government because they want to make sure that things are made in France and that the terms streamer and cloud gaming and all of that are just like too English and not, not appropriate. So you have to, I'm gonna butcher this because I, do not speak French at all. I could I could handle myself in Spanish. I cannot do French. Jour animateur and direct and jeu vidéo en noir. I screwed that up so bad, but essentially France's Ministry of Culture wants to make sure French words are French. And if you're part of the French government, you're not gonna, you're like you're, you have to say this instead of esports and gaming and all that kind of nonsense. So uh, if you're French, what do you think of this? And uh, also forgive my butchering of your beautiful language. Speaking of butchering language, let's talk about Discord for a second because they're adding the feature where you can actually chat in your voice channel where most people have a, a separate text channel in addition to the voice channel so that you can chat with people like in case you don't have a mic or it's not friendly. We have this over on our Discord, which you can join at the link in the video description. But now it's gonna be integrated into Discord directly and it's gonna be enabled automatically on all servers by June 29th and you can now opt into it in case you want to. And I think the most important thing that we need to realize is Facebook is taking action to keep its platform safe from this lady. I, we have to be suspicious of her. We also have to be suspicious of Discord because uh, their promo image for this is just like furries. I don't, why? Like why Discord? Why why are you promoting your 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 text chat feature with with furries? Is there like some connection I'm missing? But you know where we're gonna find furries in space? Okay, you want alien life? Well, the James Webb Space Telescopes probably are not best bet at finding extraterrestrial life, but at least giving us a clearer understanding of the cosmos. And now we have a date as to the first time we're gonna see images from this beautiful, beautiful telescope. First color images coming out July 12th from the European Space Agency saying that's when it's happening. The release of Webb's first full color images will offer a unique moment for us to all to stop and marvel at a view humanity has never seen before. I'm excited for this. I love when Hubble comes out with new stuff. I'm even more excited for James Webb's stuff to come out. It looks like this went off without a hitch. I'd like one of the most in hotly anticipated scientific launches ever. And it like it actually went on a rocket into space and like is now going to take pictures of aliens. I love it. Intel appears to be loving all of the fabrication facilities that might be making chips because Intel's already courted TSMC to help make some of their GPUs. But now it looks like Pat Gelsinger, the CEO of Intel, is heading on over to Korea in order to ask Samsung to potentially help them out with a few things. Not a whole lot there. We'll see if there's any more developments with it. But it looks like Intel's expanding its options and trying to figure out, hey, who can we use to make our stuff? And that way we don't ever get stuck in a bottleneck again where we can't make our stuff and we fail. So let's depend on other partners who actually look like they're doing good stuff. It seems like a good strategy. I don't know. And what's a good strategy is to talk about GPUs. You guys seem to like that. And now we have more details from video cards talking about when the 40 series might actually be releasing. Video cards saying that these are rumors and as much as they want to tell you that they're 100% confirmed dates, which they are right now, that they could actually change. But we're expecting that the 40 series will be announced sometime in mid-July. The 4090 is likely to debut in August, the 4080 in September, and the 4070 in October in case you're trying to figure out when to pick up your new GPU. 4070 in October is actually quite a ways away. Still got four good months to put in before we can get to that. And I'm not gonna put in any more time to this episode of Hot News because I am done. I'll see you back here for more hot tech news tomorrow, my friends.